There we are. The Dominion. Yeah, and they've got Tassin's agents. Best Lilo. Give us the relic! We know it's here! I... I don't know what you mean. Then I'll show you. No. That's not how we conduct business. Ready, sir! We found the relic! A pity for you. Negotiations have concluded. A expansionist military faction from the northern region of Stranheim. The Dominion are a disappearing hardened faction with advanced technology through the use of Ember Tech, but with unknown goals. They have a large presence currently in Bastion and have been noted as the main culprits of the downfall of Freemark. First originating after the death of Helena Tarsis, the Dominion are one of the three factions of today's created, through the separation of the Legion of Dawn and the other two factions being the Sentinels and the Freelancers. Each of the factions followed a specific teaching of Helena's goals, with the Dominion focused on valor and power, opposed to the Sentinels being the wall of the people, or the Freelancers being the protectors of the people. The Dominion believe power is everything, and with power they can achieve peace, but through their methods it's considered questionable to the many, as they use their power to keep people on the short lease while also committing heinous acts to achieve their goals. Because of the way they treat others through their brutal tactics and indoctrinated nature, they are considered enemies to the Freelancers, the Sentinels and Corvus, who they are currently at conflict with via espionage. Currently, not much information around the Dominion daily life, culture, government or people of Stranham are currently known in current records. We only know the northern regions are colder than the warm climates of Bastion, and from documentation of Dominion personnel, they seem to follow only what they are told to follow, as your existence is sworn to sing in the very notes they are telling you to. Through control, tyranny and supremacy, that's the only way of life for the people of Stranham to live and abide by, as said by Leighton, the Dominion spy, in the fort. The only Dominion I've met are murdering th It's the only world they know, the only one they're allowed to know. And you worked for them. It's more than work, it's a way of life. The Monitor you went up against, I know his kind well. Your existence is sworn to singing only the notes they tell you to. Control. Tyranny. Supremacy. So one day you just stopped singing their tune? I ran from it. Any life in Bastion had to be better than Strollheim. Their fascist nature, which could be compared to some modern day leadership, is very noticeable to those who have ever met them in person, such as Leighton, who at first seems like a genuine character to like, until a certain key phrase is said to him. And then, he shows an almost emotionless side of his, who places his job above everyone else, and everything else. Does Prism Tacit mean anything to you? This... This was... Leighton? This was a mistake. We shouldn't have done it. What? I'm remembering now. You have no idea what's going on here. Whatever it is, we need the truth. It's the only way this gets solved. You may regret that. Then tell me why. A Dominion plan to infiltrate Corvus. A cipher mentally programmed to pose as a defector. Uh, wait a minute. Underneath the defector's persona, the real agent remembers everything he sees and hears. Oh, crap. I remember who I am. You're the agent. My name is the Trigger. I'm Prism Tacit. You bastard. You've been lying to everyone this whole time? It's my mission. You used us. Me. Your wife. She's the target. Nadira is Aurora. What? That's why it's so painful to hear. Aurora, the codename for the enemy operative most likely to have useful intelligence. Gain her trust. Foster a sense of confidence. Encourage feelings of romantic love, if necessary. Everything was a lie. A lie that grew into the truth. The man I was programmed to be has become the man I want to be. My conscience began as a facade, a layer, but it fed the seeds of doubt, of truth. I understand the pain I've caused, that I will cause. I really do love her. But I pulled away, knowing what the other part of me planned. I can't lose her. They show a affirmative nature, where the mission to come first, and focus highly in their military presence, with their technology being the very best to date. Something that if we look through our history pages, is quite a common theme for nations like these to show off what they're capable of, 
against others and what effect they may become in the near future. We are first introduced to them in game through a cutscene by Freelancer Yarrow, who tells the story of Freemark and how it tragically fell by the Dominion, who are after a relic called the Cenotap, which was based underneath the Fort of Freemark. Through finding the relic, Dr. Harkin and the Monitor try to access the power of the Cenotap for his own, which led to it backfiring and thus resulting in the full destruction of the fort, the many lives lost, and creating the dreaded Heart of Raid Cataclysm, which we took part in stopping. Well, trying. Although we never managed to stop the Heart of Rage the first time, we did manage to stop it a second time through the use of building the Dawn Shield that would allow access to the destroyed city and stopping the Marder plus Cataclysm once and for all. Through the show of force, they are highly equipped for any threat thrown at them, with the standard shock troopers being equipped with standard energy based weaponry and shock grenades, while Major is being equipped with high power and javelins or Dominion Enhancement Tech. They also all get given the necessary training to survive different climates, survive interrogation, espionage, guerrilla warfare and relic recovery, which then makes them hardened and focused. They show resolve to where they will complete the mission effectively or die trying, no question asked. The top leaders in the field being their monitors who are considered the captains of the groups and follows a higher formatarian on the call and calculated in their presence. To become a monitor is to become a secret police which requires years of training and only given to the best of the best. We don't know how many there are, but we do know there are multiple of them, all with Dominion forces of their own, operating around the different regions and with different objectives around the world. The technology now is, I would consider the most noteworthy of them. It is one of the best that any nation, city or fort has ever seen in current date. Through the use of steel technology, they have managed to create a javelin of their own called the Storm, capable of harnessing the power of the Anthem in small amounts, but enough to bring even the most skilled answers to their needs. As well as the javelin, they also dabbled in combining both beasts of the land and technology into one, to creating an enhanced version of their counterparts, with much stronger attacks such as the enhanced brutes with recharging shields and new elemental attacks, or the enhanced hounds with faster attacks. They've also dabbled with experimentation for creating a new and powerful killing machine out on the field. Notably, they have made a powerful but dreadful being within their ranks called the Furies. Something that was only created through the sheer madness that the Dominion could bring, or better off by a Dominion scientist called Dr. Harkin, who is believed to be the one to take part in their creation. These beings are said to be created through experimenting on volunteers or prisoners by exposing them to raw anthem, and then placing their mind controlling device to allow them to control it. It's also been noted that their arms have been extended to fit more seals in them, so they can have more power at their whim, even to the point of elongating the arms to abnormal lengths. But strangely, it's only for one arm rather than both arms. And I don't know whether this is just a design feature or whether there's a specific reasoning behind this feature. If you ever see one in action, they are incredibly dangerous with powers capable of zapping the complete life out of you with a switch of the hands, while also having a built in failsafe that allows them to form a black hardened ball around them so they recover while dishing more damage out. They also seem to have incredibly fast speeds to where they can disappear and reappear within seconds while follow up on an attack, but I believe this is only for a short duration, not something that's incredibly long. If you ever see one, it's a device to put them out of their misery, not only because of how dangerous they are, but to end their lives quickly and painlessly, considering what process had to be done to warp them into this form. No one deserves stuff like this, not in this world of course. Lastly, they are the only faction present to be using energy based weaponry since most weapons that we use and other factions use rely on bullets or explosives. We don't know the process behind the creation of it, nor do we know what type of material is being used for the creation. However, considering the vast amount of items in the world relying on Ember to function and bring to life to them, it wouldn't surprise me if this was the case that the Dominion enhanced materials to be used into specially crafted ammo for themselves. The fact that they managed to create weaponry based around solar energy to the current world proves that the Dominion are not only highly advanced in technology and science, but also show that they can innovate and weaponize nearly anything they come across, be it man, machine or animal. They seem to have the resources, which shows, and if they ever start to run out, then they'll just find an area high in required material and then just take it by force. Now with all this sounding great and them sounding all powerful, Currently, we know that the Monitor is dead and gone, and their goals for taking the power of the Amp from for their own being shattered. The Dominion have gone silent in their actions, although they still have presence within the land. 
However, this doesn't mean they're entirely gone. The Dominion are much larger than we currently see in game and only play a small part in a much grander theme they set out in our adventure. We will definitely see more of them in time, with bigger and newer threats to come. And also, the new Sunken Cell Stronghold has opened up some new dialogue about Dr. Harkin and his past experiments, but mainly opening up about the Dominion's presence within the area and what they're after from the late Harkin's research. I'll be sure to cover this in a new video soon. So, I'd like to say thank you everyone for stopping by to watch my lore videos, as it does help me grow and share more with the community and you guys, basically. Now, if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, or even comment and share. Literally, just spread the love, guys. But once again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.